Today's video topic is about pH and solubility of drugs. pH is the measurement of the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. The more hydrogen ions, the lower the pH and vice versa. The pH equation is pH is equal to minus the log concentration of H+. pH is used to determine the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution and is expressed via the pH scale with 7 being neutral and going above the 7 you will have alkaline and below that would be acidic. Remember that acids have an increased H plus concentration and are proton donors while bases have an increased OH concentration and are proton acceptors. It's also worth noting that strong acids and bases fully dissociate an aqueous solution. Weak acids and bases, on the other hand, only partially dissociate. In terms of weak acids and bases, they have dissociation constants which are expressed as Ka and Kb, respectively. So mathematically, Ka is equal to the sum of the concentration of the products over the reactants. pKa is used when talking about drugs. It is equal to minus the log of Ka and it's the pH at which 50% of the drug is ionized and 50% of the drug is unionized. Okay, so let's get something straight. Let's move away from the chemistry a bit and talk about drugs. Why do we care if something is ionized or not? Well, ionization is important for a drug to be soluble. Let's say you take a tablet. Uh, first of all, this tablet needs to break down and solubilize. In order to do so, it must be ionized. Next, you want the drug to be absorbed into the bloodstream, but it can't do that when it's ionized. It must be unionized in order to pass through the lipid membrane. So how can one drug go from ionized to unionized? Well, the answer lies in pH and pKa, which brings us back to the chemistry bit. As I said earlier, pKa is the pH at which 50% of the drug is ionized and 50% of the drug is unionized. Now, take note of this equilibrium equation for acidic drugs and this equation for basic drugs. Now, let's take an example for an acidic drug. All right, so let's say we have a drug that has a pKa of 3. And remember, the pKa is the pH of the drug where 50% of it is ionized and 50% of it is unionized. So in this equilibrium equation, the left side is unionized and the right side is ionized. So what happens if we take this drug and put it in a low pH, so um, pH of 2? This low pH has an increase of hydrogen ions, so we are increasing the right side of the equation. So think of it, this is an equilibrium equation. So if you increase one side, the other side has to compensate for that. So it shifts the reaction to the left and you get the unionized part. So you get 90% of the drug is ionized and 10% is unionized. So if you move below the pKa by two numbers, so now we're at pH 1, you would see that it's 99% unionized and 1% ionized. But it would never reach 100% uh, ionization because these are weak acids, and weak acids only partially dissociate. So they, they're never 100% uh, ionized or unionized. Now let's move above the pKa. So at pH 4, you, uh, you have a higher pH, which means a lower number of hydrogen ions. So you're reducing the right side of the equation, which shifts the equilibrium to the right, and you get the ionized form. So that's where you see the A minus, that's the ionized form. So 90% of the drug is ionized. And, and remember that these are weak acids and bases, so they never fully dissociate. Now let's take a basic drug. So now that we're dealing with a basic drug, we use the basic uh, drug equation. So this equilibrium equation. And let's say the pKa is 8. So that's where it's 50% ionized and 50% unionized. Below, 
the pKa, so at pH 7, you're increasing the hydrogen ions, which shifts the equation to the left where you get the ionized form. And if you increase the pH, you are decreasing the hydrogen ions, which shifts the equilibrium to this side, and you get more of the unionized form. And remember, to increase solubility is above pKa for acidic drugs and below pKa for basic drugs. AABB. And always correlate ionized means soluble, unionized means unsoluble. So let's take that to the human body where there are varying levels of pH depending on where you are. So in the GI or the stomach, you have a pH of 1 to 2.1. And as you move down the GI tract, the pH kind of increases. So what happens to drugs in these places, you know, because they're all influenced by the pH? So let's take drug M as an example. It has a log P of 1.9, a pKa of 9.7, and it's an amine. So we know that it's a basic drug and it's a lipophilic drug. Okay, so because its pKa is 9.7, we know that's where it's 50% ionized and 50% unionized. And then we write down the basic equilibrium equation. And from here, we can take a shortcut because we know that basic drugs are soluble below the pKa. So for this drug, it would be soluble in the stomach and it would be absorbed in the intestines. And most oral drugs are weak bases for that fact. So they're soluble in the stomach and they're absorbed in the intestines. So let's take another example. So aspirin is acidic and we know that by looking at its functional group. So it has a carboxyl functional group. And as I said, its pKa is three. And this is a tricky one because you wouldn't use the you know regular uh, example, equilibrium example. Uh, aspirin is absorbed by a phenomenon known as ion trapping. So in the stomach, it exists in the non-ionized form and then it's absorbed into the bloodstream in the stomach um, because, as I said, it's non-ionized, so it can cross through the lipophilic barrier. But then, when it enters the blood, it becomes ionized again, and it prevents it from going back to the stomach. So the ion is kind of trapped in the blood, and that's ion trapping. Let's take another example. So paracetamol. Paracetamol is a basic drug and it's an amine, all right? Its pKa is 9.4. So where is it absorbed and where is it soluble? Because it's a basic drug, we can take that shortcut again without using the equation. So it, below the pKa, it's soluble. So it would be soluble in the stomach and the upper part of the GI, and it would be absorbed in the intestine. All right, so here's a summary graph. On the x-axis, you have the pKa, and on the y-axis, you have percentage of ionization. So this is the acidic drug curve. At the pKa, it's 50% ionized, and as you go above the pKa, it, it becomes 100% ionized or close to 100%, and below the pKa, it goes close to 0% ionization. And for the basic drug curve, at the pKa, is 50% ionized and below the pKa you get 99% ionized and above the pKa is 0% ionization. And remember log D pH is the log P at a specific pH. So let's take this example. You have two drugs, drug X and drug Y. Drug X has a log P of 4.2 and drug Y has a log P of 4.4. So you would say they have the same lipophilicity. However, when tested at pH 7, log X had a uh, log X, sorry, drug X had a log P of 4 and drug Y had a log P of 1.5. So you see that the lipophilicity changed just by changing the pH. And that's what I was saying about the human body, you know, the different 
uh, changes in pH can influence drugs. In summary, for acidic drugs, this is the equilibrium equation we use. And remember that solubility increases above the pKa. Whereas for basic drugs, this is the equilibrium equation and solubility increases below the pKa. Thanks for watching.